The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Tuesday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. And we got markets in positive territory. Oil down 10 plus percent right now. Volatility continuing in that June contract. Dow futures right now up 356 points. That's 1.5 percent in the green, trading at 24,366. S&Ps above 2,900, trading 36 points positive. That's almost 1.3 percent, trading at 2,905. NASDAQ futures up a solid 90 points more than a full percent at 89.15 oil will start things off why not the oil contract right now trading at 11.44 you're down about 10 percent down one point one dollar and 35 cents you see the volatility we had just since about 5 a.m this morning you were trading at ten dollars and 25 cents you trade up a solid Two plus dollars from that point we trade down two dollars all in the span of about three hours. And since then, crude now popping about a dollar in just the last 30 minutes. These are five minute bars we're looking at. You put it even on a 15 minute to see the type of volatility in terms of that swing up and down. Dramatic fast moves in both directions in that crude market. Jumping over to the gold contract. Gold pretty much flat on the session, 1723. We'll start things off. Let's jump over to the charts. We'll start it off with the Dow. All the markets right near session highs in terms of pre-market session highs. Dow trading 24,382. You back it up. We really began right at about midnight, 23,891. So you're talking about almost 500 Dow points from that level. NASDAQ 100, 89.15. Midnight, we're trading at about 87.78, so you're talking about 130 NASDAQ 100 points. S&Ps, we go from a price level of 28.52. We're now up about 56 points from there because we actually traded a little bit lower, almost 20 S&P points. We were lower before this market trended higher. You see where we finished the day yesterday, Monday, we finished at about 28.65. The market makes it down to 28.52, so about 13 points in the negative. And from there, we've taken off topside, basically pre-market session highs at 29.08. There's your crude oil contract. As we covered, we peaked at 12.63 at about 5.30 a.m., now trading at 11.55. Gold contract, 17.24. At about 1.30 in the morning, we were trading at 17.06. And the euro U.S. dollar at 108.80. We are full swing into earnings season, and I'm going to jump right into it with some of the biggest names out there in the last basically 12 hours since the close last night. Pfizer beats first quarter earnings estimates in race to develop coronavirus vaccine. The drug maker reported adjusted earnings 80 cents a share, seven cents higher than the analyst estimate. The company reported revenue of 12 billion. They were looking for 11.8 to see how Pfizer PFE is trading on that news. There's your volatility up to a, uh, no, PFE. Pfizer shares from 38.33 were bidding above 39 on that number. You also have Caterpillar out with their numbers. First quarter sales declined 21%, does not give 2020 outlook because of pandemic. Caterpillar reported revenues 10.6 billion, a decrease of 21%, adjusted earnings $1.60 compared to $3.25 a year ago. Company said it's not providing a financial outlook for obvious reasons. Caterpillar shares. There's your action on that number. Lots of volatility, but up a bit with the market at about a 116 bid by 116.74 offer after closing at 115.20. 3M out with their numbers rising after first quarter sales increase on strong demand for personal safety products. Shouldn't be too surprising there. It said it's doubled its global respirator output to 100 million per month since the beginning of 2020, and it's withdrawing the full year financial guidance thanks to uncertainty. Those shares, Triple M, trading up to about 161 on their numbers from 153. Quite a chart here to drill it down. 
We go from about 180 down to 114. You're going to open at 160 right on this line, which is where we were jumping it around in about early February to late January. Southwest out with their numbers. First loss since 2011. Coronavirus drives down revenue 18 percent. Surprised it's only 18 percent. I imagine that's going to be a more dramatic number as we proceed. Southwest, <clears throat> excuse me, there we go. Southwest expects revenue in May to fall as much as 95 percent from a year earlier. The airline disclosed plans for a public stock offering and a billion in additional debt as bookings dry up. These companies, especially the airlines, something like the cruises, they need cash to survive a 95% slowdown. Love, we'll keep it on the daily before we zoom in. Quite the drop off, of course, on all these airlines. From 58 down to 29, we're going to open a little bit lower this morning on their numbers. There's your action, actually spiked higher, but quite the drop off now at about 28.73. Why not? We'll jump around. JetBlue in the news I saw as well, becoming the first airline to mandate masks starting in early May. I believe it's May 5th. You'll need to wear a mask. Uh, so when you think about going back to normal, normal, not quite going back to normal, when just new regulations in terms of when people get back on the planes, easing back into things with using masks required now on JetBlue starting in about a week, I believe. Pepsi out with their numbers, adjusted earnings rise as consumers stock up, but company yanks outlook. In March, Pepsi announced it agreed to buy Rockstar Energy, a deal valued at $3.85 billion. Their numbers, $1.07 adjusted, revenue $13.88. Frito-Lay owner reported first quarter net income of $1.34 billion, or $0.96 cents a share, down from $1.41 excuse me, down from $1.41 billion or a dollar a share. Excluding items, $1.07 a share, net sales rising. Quite a number still, 7.7% to $13.88 billion. Pepsi shares, trading up on that news, decent numbers, 136.52 from 134. Some context on Pepsi, quite the slide. Now we're going to open at about 136, so we're back right at these levels. You're only talking about trading at 147 on the highs of about February 14th, Valentine's Day. Merck, out with their numbers, profits rise, cuts 2020 forecast over COVID-19 uncertainty. The company now expects its full year adjusted profit forecast to be in the 517 to 537 area. They were previously looking for 562 to 577. Net income attributable shareholders rose to $3.22 billion or $1.26 from $2.92 or $1.12 a share. MRK. We're going to open a bit lower. There's your long-term context from above 90 to 65. We're going to open about 81. There's your action on the earnings pulling lower a bit on Merck shares at 81.90. Jumping around to the VIX. Volatility as this market inches higher again. Could we get a 29 or a 30 handle potentially? Uh, we talked about it yesterday. This VIX. Talk about drying up. We're now going back to territory. Here's your run up. Things really escalating. February 20th. You could say even February 19th, the last day, all was well. Quite a steep incline to 85, but 31, we're now back in the area that we were trading at in the VIX in late February slash early March, almost uh, two full months. We've been above these levels as this market climbs back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back from the program. We now have the S&Ps as we zoom in at pre-market session highs, 29.11, up 1.4%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, Prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by 39 points. That's 1.37 percent, trading at 2908. You put things in context just really to see where we're at in these S&Ps, folks. Check out that drop and the clawback from 3397 down to 2174. We're now at a 2908 price point. For some context, and context is so important, I use the word often, but check out that run as the S&Ps now approaching within about 24 points of the 618 retracement of the entire drop that we just had beginning on February 20th. It's April 28th, and we plummeted from 3,400 potentially to 2,174. We're 2,908. The NASDAQ, to see where that is. Now, the NASDAQ, a little bit of a laggard. We're actually not over Check that, the highest that we had on April 17th in the NASDAQ, that high being 89.66. We're trading right now at 89.15. Back to the S&Ps, you can see where that level was actually in the S&Ps. You're talking about a high of 28.85 as we're a solid 25 S&P points above that level. The Dow, we're above that level as well. And the Dow 618 retracement is a solid almost 800 points above where we're trading at right now. Jumping in the news of the day, uh, finishing it up with Pepsi numbers. The company also said it expects to buy back $2 billion in shares this year and pay $5.5 billion in dividends. Keeping that in mind, Pepsi shares, and to zoom it in, trading higher this morning, as we mentioned. There's your volatility on Pepsi. Always good to hear in this type of an environment that you're getting buyback, you're getting dividends, Pepsi. Seems like they will be okay on a cash perspective. Harley Davidson trading higher this morning on their numbers. The motorcycle maker earned 45 cents per share for the latest quarter, four cents a share above estimates. Revenue slightly above forecast. However, profit down 45% from a year ago. Global lockdowns hit sales. Harley also suspended share repurchases and cut its quarterly dividend to two cents a share from 38. Nonetheless, you see that they cut, but they beat the numbers. Maybe the market liking it. Was checking out Harley earlier. Check out that pop from 1894 up to 2083, Harley trading at 2035 by 2065 right now for Harley Davidson. DHI, they're out with their numbers. The home builder beat consensus forecast by 18 cents a share, quarterly profit $1.30. Revenue also above estimates. 
the home builder. Company said sales and profits are slowing, however, and cancellations are increasing due to the coronavirus pandemic. Not surprising to hear that, but check out that pop from 4211 up to almost 46 right now, trading with a bid ask of 45 by 4525. Boeing will resume production of its 787 Dreamliner aircraft at its South Carolina factory on May 4th. It suspended production on April 8th because of the COVID-19 pandemic and plans to institute, institute a series of safeguards at the factory before workers return. I imagine that's a tough one. Um, you see these man, meat plants, excuse me, BA. So pretty much unchanged up a bit with the market. We were at 123.83 yesterday. Boeing just continuing to struggle. I mean, check out that chart. No real bid there at all. We're just basically teetering at um, 128. We've bounced off this level a few times. That recent low of 89 all the way back on March 18th for Boeing. HSBC out with their numbers, lower than expected quarterly profit. Bank Earmark $3 billion for possible bad loans amid the coronavirus outbreak. All these billions these banks have to set aside. Uh, should be a real heads up, folks, in terms of the, the amount of numbers that they feel like are going to go default. There's HSBC at about $25.77. Novartis out with their numbers. First quarter profits and sale came in above analyst estimates, jumping over to NVS. There's your action there, up to about 90.64. And what we have after the bell today, the biggest of them all for today is going to be Google. Their numbers coming out, Google. Now, why don't I'm going to jump to real quick as we talk about it. Google set to take a hit as travel website slash online ad spending. So check out these numbers here, and it would make sense as these numbers. Uh, booking holdings, you know, in terms of advertising one of the quickest ways you might be able to pull down some costs of bookings the parent of booking.com priceline and kayak slash its ad spending on google from about four billion with a b last year to one to two billion so they're going to lose two to three billion dollars from this one customer alone obviously a dramatic customer expedia chairman barry dillard on squawk box earlier this month his online travel agency which also promotes heavily on Google, would spend less than a billion on advertising this year, down from $5 billion in 2019. Airbnb last month suspended marketing. All of these, let alone small businesses, that's just the large businesses, let alone the amount of small businesses. Um, you know, we advertise on Google. Many businesses do. It's an easy way to reach people with a targeted demographic, and it'll be interesting to see what they have to say tonight. Uh, after the bell, you put this on some longer term, action on Google, and I already had this set up here. We're teetering at about a 50%, right? We just covered the markets. We're actually inching back towards about a 618, all of them, depending on what you look at. NASDAQ's already been above that level, but compare that with a company like Microsoft. Because, you know, you're looking for strength. Microsoft's going to open at 175. We're only at 190. Uh, Facebook shares. Similar action in terms of well off the highs from 224 to 137. You know, you got to pull up Amazon because quite an acceleration. The recent highs before all of this at about 21.96. We climb up to 24.61. We're going to open at about 23.83. Netflix, similar action as well, almost near those all-time highs. And how about Tesla? Talk about an acceleration. We're going to open at about 7.95. Tesla from 9.68 down to a low on March 18th of $350, we're now trading at about $800 on Tesla shares. Jumping around the other news stories. And there was the JetBlue story I talked about that they will mandate face coverings for passengers taking effective May 4th. I imagine you'll see the other airlines follow suit. Dr. Kerr, uh, Kerr, Dr. Pepper, the company reported quarterly earnings 29 cents a share, two above estimate. I was checking out this earlier, KDP. There's some drop and acceleration, but today we're going to open even higher at about the $28 range. So Keurig Dr. Pepper getting back all of the losses from 18 to 28. I'm going to jump around as we finish this. Some of the stocks I've been looking at. And I've talked about them recently, but man, they've got some action recently. Check out that acceleration on Disney. So even from Friday, you were down at a, below $100, two days of an acceleration. We're going to open more than $2 higher on Disney at 108.10. Disney, one of those companies really suffering, but seeing a, a huge buildup 
in terms of, whoops, I'm gonna pull this over, because both of these companies have earnings next week. Disney earnings on May 5th, so that number coming a week from today, you're gonna get Disney earnings, should be interesting. And I think the market anticipating that, you know, they've come out and they've already told the market that they have 50 million plus subscribers. I imagine there might be some optimism in those earnings. That's just my opinion, but I, I imagine so. And that's part of the reason why you see Disney up 8% from where we're trading at on Friday. Some of the ride sharing companies getting quite a pop as well. If you just back it up to last week, That ridiculous low of $13 with the market, but even from where we were as of April 3rd, trading from about 21 to 30, we're gonna open at about 31. And how about the cannabis stocks? Check out that action from 1450 on Friday up to almost $18 for canopy. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back to finish up the program, see what else we have on tap. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Markets at basically pre-market session highs. S&P is up now 41 points or 1.45% in the green as we get about 35 minutes to go until the opening bell. Don't forget, folks, check out the front page. Tom's going to be doing a Timing the Trade webinar all day, two days from right now. It's going to be starting in basically 48 hours. Sign up on the front page of TFNN. You'll get his 
physical copy of a book mailed to you. You'll get a month of his market insights. That starts instantly. You can get in there for a couple of days before the webinar. Get into Market Insights. For you current Market Insights subscribers out there, you get a free month of Market Insights applied to your current subscription. So you add that savings there as well. All on the front page of TFNN, two days from right now. Check it out on the front page. Going back to other stories we have happening in the market, talking about uh, the potential for a meat shortage. All of these processing plants breaking down. You have Tyson, you have two other meat processors uh, coming out in terms of almost a third of U.S. pork capacity is down. And JBS said Sunday it will shutter another beef production facility in Washington, Brazil, the world's number one shipper of chicken and beef, saw its first major closure with the halt of a poultry plant, and key operations are also down in Canada, the latest being a British Columbia poultry plant. Hundreds of plants in America still running, but you're gonna see potentially basically a little bit of squeeze on meat for a short period of time, but that could be happening. What else we have happening? If you saw it out there, the Pentagon declassifying three UFO videos taken by Navy pilots. Pretty cool. If you haven't seen it, folks, check check it out. It's uh, it's worth watching. Who know who knows what they're looking at? Um, no one really, but and if you're a, if you're a Belgian, good news for you. Your urge to eat fries twice a week as coronavirus creates massive potato surplus. Belgians are being called upon to eat fries at least twice a week as more than 750,000 tons of potatoes are at risk of being thrown away. So it looks like they'll have plenty of food over there. And we'll wrap it up with Mnuchin. He is out there, I believe, on CNBC talking about um, how about the Lakers gaining access to one of those small business loans. I believe they may have returned that money. They probably will be, but. Outrageous, outrageous, I would agree, some of these companies. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento, live with Trade What You See at 9 o'clock. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Live programming all day at TFNN. We'll be right back.